Hello and welcome back to another installment of Tasty Tutorials. With me, your host, a budget David Harbour. Today we're taking a look at spherical joints. We'll learn how to create a perfect joint with a sphere and also rig it. We'll learn about limit constraints, we'll learn how to use track to constraints, and we'll also do a very short cloth simulation that covers the joint. So let's get into it. So we're going to open up Blender 2.83. I'm going to select everything in the scene by pressing A twice and delete with X. Now we want to add a UV sphere, so a mesh UV sphere. This is going to be the lower part of our ball joint. Front view by pressing 1 on the numpad, enter edit mode by pressing tab, then press Z to go into wireframe and let's just press C and then select all of the top vertices of the sphere without choosing the middle strip. Press X, delete the vertices so we get this half sphere. Exit edit mode and press Ctrl A to reset the scale, otherwise our modifiers won't be working properly. And in the modifier properties, we're first gonna add a solidify and we're just gonna turn it around, so at about minus 0.7. And that's gonna be it for our first sphere. Then we're gonna press Shift A again and add another UV sphere. It is extremely important that you keep the center or rather the origin point at the world origin. So when we add another sphere, it's going to fit perfectly into the other one that we have hollowed. The next thing we wanna do, go into edit mode and let's just select the top vertices here. I'm gonna go to face select, press C and I'm just going to select the top of our sphere. Press S and then Z to scale them down on the Z axis and I want them to scale down to zero. So you can also take a look in your resize and make sure that the Z scale is zero. Press E to extrude and just gonna extrude it up to about, let's say one, like so. So we have this protrusion at the top. We can repeat the same process for our lower sphere. I'm just gonna turn off the solidify modifier so it's not bothering me. I'm just gonna select s z scale it so it's at zero and then just press e and extrude it down to one and we have our little ball bearing let's just include the solidify and it looks like this choose both of them by shift selecting so shift right click in my uh, case otherwise if you're using a different shortcut convention you're gonna choose with left Control a and reset the scale again just to be sure now we have to set up a bone for them. We're gonna press Shift A, we're gonna go to, into the armature and we'll add a single bone. Now the bone is not appearing, we have to go into our object data properties, viewport display and then click in front so we can see the bone in front of our objects. Pull down this bone so the top of the bone is inside of our world origin. Go into edit mode and in edit mode let's just press E and extrude the Z towards the, let's say, the bottom of our protrusion. So it looks like this. Let's go back into object mode. Let's select the top sphere, then shift select the bone and go into pose mode in the top left corner. Click on the top bone and press Ctrl P and then bone. We're gonna repeat the same thing for the bottom. So we're gonna shift select the bottom and the bone the bone should be shift selected last, enter pose mode, select the bottom bone, control P, bone. Now what happens is that if we rotate our bone, our bone actually rotates along its side neatly inside of the other sphere. But we have a problem. Here our bone is actually just protruding through, it's basically clipping through the bottom part. We're going to go back into object mode and we're going to add another sphere. This sphere is going to be smaller, let's say 0.3. We're going to move it on the x-axis, on the z upwards, so it looks like this. Now we're going to play with the constraints. Basically, we're going to go back into our pose mode. We're going to choose the top bone because that's the bone that's going to be moving. And we'll go into our bone constraint properties. And here we'll add two things. We'll add a track to and we'll add a limit rotation. Now for the track to, we want to select the target, which is going to be our sphere. And you can see that our top sphere is actually following the other sphere. 
Let's go into object mode. Now we can move this and you can see that our bone is tracking the sphere. However, we have a small issue. Still, it's clipping. That's why we can just select. We don't have to go back into pose mode. We just select the bone and we're going to limit it on the X and Y axes. Now you can see that it's completely blocked. And this is because we have to set the minimum and maximum values. The rotation is going to be limited on the Y axis and on the X axis. We want to increase this rotation on the X axis to 90 increase the limit of the Y also to 90. Now let's grab our sphere and let's see what happens. So it stops right at the cutoff at the 90 degree mark. However, it's not stopping where the sphere is. We're going to go back into our bones and we're going to set the minimum of 11, which means that now we have a range where the bone actually stops. If we want to fine tune this, we're just going to go into front view, press GZ and then move our sphere so it's directly on the X axis. We're going to choose our bone, our constraints. We're going to zoom in so we see what's happening and we're going to increase the minimum so it's barely clipping with the bottom of our sphere. That's how we make the joint follow our sphere. And this has many applications. As you can see, it's working with both ends. It's also working on the Y axis. It's going to work in both ways. And the beautiful part is if we move it to the world origin, so we're going to move the sphere to world origin, raise it up to the Z, you can see that it's following the Z perfectly. Another fun way you can try this is you split your screen, go into the graph editor. And in the graph editor, we're going to do something that I often use for my animations, select the sphere, press I, and I'm going to set a, let's say location, just a location keyframe. So in the graph menu editor, I'm going to press N, modifiers, add a noise, and this noise, I'm just going to increase the strength, and I'm going to scale it so it's really wide. And now if I play my animation, you can see the sphere is just wobbling around the screen, and the joint is following it perfectly. So we can do that for all three locations. You can also then offset your locations so that they are not so homogenous. We can do the Z location too. The Z location is going to be up and down. So we just increase it like so. So it has a lot of, let's say, a softer undulating motion. We're going to do it offset. So we have this nice sphere that's just traveling around. And whenever it's going to hit the bottom, it's going to get clipped by the actual object constraint. So this is just an extra trick you can do. Now, for our final thing here, we're going to make a sort of a cloth shell around our sphere. So I'm going to delete the top sphere for now. We can add one later and reassign it. I will add another UV sphere. This one, however, I'm going to scale it up so it's just wider than the bottom and the top sphere. I'm going to go into edit mode and face select all of the top faces at the top and at the bottom. If you can see, just go into wireframe so you can see that you've selected everything. I'm going to press X and delete just the faces. So we have this empty plane. We can increase the size of the bottom opening. So I'm just going to select the loop cut at the bottom and then just increase it so it's not clipping with our joint. Now we're going to select the top joint, go into our physics properties, click collision. And the collision, we're going to set it to be pretty tight. So we're going to make 0.01 and the inner is going to be 0103, like so. We're going to set the same collision in the bottom sphere. So 0.01, 0.03. And now we're going to set the cloth. The cloth settings can be a tutorial all on its own, but we're just going to zip through a couple of really good settings for this stuff. Press play. We can see that our ball is very wobbly. It doesn't have any traction. It's, it's not at ease into, it's not sticking to our joints. Now I'm going to decrease the end of our animation. So in the bottom right corner, I'll choose end and move it to, let's say 70 frames. I'm going to add a subdivision modifier and move it before the cloth. 
if you have something like this, don't worry. That means that we just need to update the cache. So you just move at the beginning, press play again, and you can see that we have more geometry now. Shade smooth, and let's add another subdivision after the actual cloth. Let's play around with our settings. First of all, we want to set the collisions. So the collisions, object collisions, we can drop the distance to be pretty close, let's say 0.02. And the self collisions can be set at a friction of two and a distance of 004. Now, what does this mean? Object collisions are the collisions between the actual cloth and the collisions that we've set earlier. And the self collisions are the collisions with the cloth itself. It can make wrinkles, it's going to resist itself. We can see nothing much has changed. You can see if you go really close into it and decrease the distance that it does change. It changes how our material is going to behave, though we don't have that stretching thing that we want to. And that's easily doable with the shrinking factor. Now, the shrinking factor means that if it's going to be above zero, it's going to shrink your cloth. If it's going to be below zero, it's going to expand your cloth. Now, if you go back to the beginning and press play, you can see our shrinking happening though we have some issues with our sphere they're clipping through one way of solving this is to increase the quality of the collisions and to increase the quality steps of your cloth which means that the frames and steps are going to be higher so your cloth will be behaving more precisely now let's press play and we can see it is a bit better but it's still not exactly what we want Another way of solving this is impulse clamping for both self collisions and object collisions. Let's increase the impulse clamping to three. Let's return to the beginning of the animation. And it's getting there. It's behaving a bit better. You can still increase the quality steps of the cloth and the quality of the collisions. So you can observe what's happening exactly to your mesh. So you can see that we still have a bit of occasional clipping which is again solvable by just increasing both the impulse clamping of the object collisions and the self collisions. Now, the stiffness, I usually go after I've set up these settings because the stiffness, the tension and compression are kind of self-explanatory. So compression is how much the material will resist compressing when you are trying to stretch it down. And the tension is, sort of the opposite, so how much your material will resist stretching. Now, let's just pull these guys down to five so that they're not as high as they were. And let's see what that does to our cloth. So it's a bit stretchier. It takes a while to bake the particles, but you can see that it's behaving quite all right. So for now, our cloth is behaving appropriately. For now, our cloth doesn't have very strong clipping. It's behaving as it should everything is fine. However, we still need to animate this. Now, when you get to animation, that's where you usually get some issues. Before we move to animation, we'll just check this gap that we have over here, which is easily solvable by just adding a solidify modifier. Let's move it up. So it's going to be before our second subdivision. And let's just regulate the thickness so it's nicely hugging our sphere. We can increase the viewport so we have just a bit of a better reproduction, but that's it. Now, we can add also different subdivision modifiers to these, but I usually, when I'm doing this in the prototyping phase, I don't do that because it's going to take a lot of computing power. So usually I do that at the end of the whole thing. Now, let's animate again our bone and let's see how it's going to behave. Let's add a mesh UV sphere again, we can pull it up, we can move it to the side with Y, scale it down and let's click on our bone, go into the bone constraints, target, you can use the eyedropper to just click on the sphere. Now let's return our sphere to the world origin, move it up on the Z axis so everything is lined up. Let's keyframe just a very simple movement, so we're gonna Put a location over here, so I location. Then we're gonna move, let's say, to frame 60. We're going to press GY and then move it on the Y axis 
and maybe even on the x-axis. So we have like a sort of diagonal movement. If we want to check what happens, we can just play it, but it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to very quickly bake this. And you should always bake your claw simulations, your particle simulations before final rendering. So I'm gonna go into cache, set the end to be at 70, and I'm gonna press bake. When your cloth is baked, let's just press play and let's see what happens with our sphere. Yeah, so you can see that it's pulling our cloth nicely. It's stretching in in a really, really satisfying way and it goes both ways. So basically you have this really nice wrinkle, nice plastic wrinkle. So this is gonna be it for this tutorial. We made a nice spherical joint, we animated it, we learned a bit about uh, constraints, about tracking, about limit rotation, and we've learned how to make a nice cloth simulation that really closes in on our joint. Now, hopefully this was helpful to you. If you'd like to see me continue this one with uh, textures and more advanced modeling, let me know down in the comments, uh, drop a like, I always appreciate that, it helps me out a lot. And yeah, that's gonna be it. See you in the next one.